the greatest story ever told. Presented by the United States Armed Forces Radio Service. Tonight we present The Unbelieving, a drama based on a teaching from the greatest life ever lived. In a Galilean town that faces on the great sea, there is sudden activity down at the waterfront, for one large vessel has just run up a flag signifying that she will sail with the tide. Casks of water and much food are being hauled down to the shore for loading. And the captain is not only busy giving his orders, but is also talking to the merchant, Aaron. Mind you, Abner, throw those casks securely. Now, Aaron, what do you say? Time's short, I have to know. Well, a man has to have time to think. Think? Nothing to think about, I... Told you, where I'm sailing, woolen cloth is as precious as food. They'll pay for it in gold. Let me take all the cloth you can spare, and I'll bring you back enough money to pay for it three times over, even after my share. Well, Aaron? I don't know. This is a good part of my possession, and a vessel can sink. No vessel of mine has ever been lost, Aaron. I know, but I have to be a little more cautious than most men. Uh, what do you mean? Well, the man doesn't like to talk of it, but I have a son, and he's not a well lad. Not that he's sick all the time, mind you, but suddenly from out of nowhere, the sickness seems to come on him like an evil spirit. And when it strikes him, he tosses and twists frantically as though he had a struggle going on inside of him, as though he wanted to throw off the evil spirit. Ah, uh, too bad, then. I've heard of such sickness. Well, you can understand that I must always have money to take care of the boy. I can't risk losing a good part of what I have. I see. Well, I'll find another merchant who'll do it. Uh, now, wait. I'll return to the house and talk to my wife. I might yet decide to do it. Uh, give me an hour, huh? An hour? All right. An hour, but no longer. I must sail with the tide. All right, men. Careful with the loading. <laughs> Yes, Aaron, what is it? You're out of breath. Is there something wrong? Oh, no, no. It's, it's just that the time's come to make an important decision. It must be made in a hurry. I want your advice. Well? If we could triple our money... Triple it? How? Oh. All I have to do is entrust most of my stock of woolen cloth to Nathan, the sea captain. He'd take it to a port where he assures me he can sell it for three times its price here. Nathan? He's a very honest man. And a good captain, too. Why not do what he asks? Well, you know how the seas are. Gales blow up suddenly. Huge waves. Treacherous rocks. Anything could happen. But isn't that one of the risks of doing business? Is it a risk I can afford to take? After all, we must think of Michael. There must always be enough money for him. Oh, Aaron. Aaron, why did it have to happen to our son? Our only child. Did anyone ever expect it? The first time it happened, I thought the end of the world had come for us. Never since then, it's been uppermost in my mind. That's why now I have to consider how this could affect him. Still, you have to believe in something. You have to believe that things will work out right. Believe? You're reproaching me again, Rebecca. Oh, no, Anne. I'm trying to help you. You know me better than anyone does, my dear. 
that I'm a man who believes only what he knows. A fact is a fact, and there's nothing more. Aaron, tomorrow the master will be here again. No, please, don't ask me to go. It would be mockery. I don't believe. Can't be. I don't belong there. If you'd only try... Don't make me feel it. Not if you won't feel right. But now, what are you going to tell Nathan? I think I know what I should tell you. You'll do it? No. But why? The fact. We must bear them in mind. The ship can sink. The cloth can be lost. Those are fears, not facts. But they can happen. They can be facts. All right, dear. Any decision you make will be good enough for me. Then I'll tell it. Oh, but before I go, is the boy here? Yes. Good. I'll... Well, I want to see him. To make sure he's still in good health. I'll call him for you. Michael, your father wants to see you a moment. Yes, father? You want me? Yes, sir. How... Uh, how do you feel today? Why, fine, father. Very well. Why? Why? Must the father explain because he cares about his son? Must he, lad? <laughs> Come here. Yes, Father. Now then, hold out your hand. There. Copper coin for you, Michael. And you're to spend it on something frivolous. Something that's no good at all, but something you'd like to have. Promise? Yes. But why? Just because you're a fine lad. Strong. Healthy. That's why. And now I have to go down to Waterfront. Business in that. Thank you very much, Father. Well, Aaron, back I see. Have you decided? The answer is no, Nathan. No? Say, what kind of businessman are you? Don't you like to make an honest profit? The risks are too great. Too many things can happen. Aaron, if I felt the way you do, I'd never take my vessel out of sight of land. I told you before I that know, I... I know, I know, I know. But still, if a man does his job right, he has to have faith that everything else will turn out well. If a man doesn't believe in that, he just doesn't believe in anything. And if a man can't believe in anything... You know, I feel sorry for you, Aaron. Yes, very sorry. But I'll find another merchant who will take the risk with me. Wait, I, uh... No. No, you'd better find another merchant. I will. Samuel, perhaps, is a smart man. He'll know a good thing when he sees it. I'm glad you're early today. What is it? Not the boy. Oh, no. Samuel has just come by to see you. He's in here. Samuel? Oh. Please, dear, at least be polite about it. Of course. Well, Samuel, good to see you. I must congratulate you on your good luck. The best transaction I ever made. You know, Nathan said three times the price. Actually, it was more than that. So I understand. Suppose you think I'm a fool for passing by the opportunity? Not at all. No one of us makes the right decision every time, but I thought you might be interested in something new. You see, that one transaction has convinced me there's a great opportunity, so I decided to put in my money, uh, with several others, of course. We'll assemble a fleet of ships, a uh, four, to begin with, and we'll carry on trade with our own ships and our own goods, and Nathan will run it all for us. How does that sound to you? I wish you the best of luck, Samuel. Uh, wait, uh, you don't understand. Uh, we'd like to have you in with us. You want me to join with you? Of course. Uh, you'll do it, won't you? I'm not a man to rush into things, Samuel. I'll, I'll have to think it over. Of course. Uh, uh, tomorrow, then? Well, we'll see. Yes. Uh, let us know when you decide, Aaron. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. 
Well, Ant, it sounds fine, doesn't it? I don't know. One man among many. Don't you see what that means? I won't really have control over my own money. But if you can all make more money together than you can singly, isn't it worth it? But to let others decide what to do with my money, I, I don't have faith in others. Oh, I see. Understand, I don't say they're dishonest. But men are a little more lax with money that's not their own. You mean you're not going to do it? I mean I won't jump at it. I'll think about it. Aaron, have you seen them? Talk to them? Yes. And? I couldn't do it. Well, at least you made up your mind. You won't be worrying about it as you had the last two days. Rebecca, you don't know. You just don't know. You think it's over when I make my decision. No. I think about it and think about it. It keeps going through my mind at night when all others rest. Not all others rest. You mean... You know? Of course. You can't worry alone, Aaron. Not as long as I'm your wife. I see. Yes, dear. I know what it means not to have faith in anyone or anything. It means you live alone in a world full of people who want to be your friends, but don't get the chance. You? I have faith in you. Yet you've never had enough faith to do what I asked. About the master? Yes. You're right. I guess I... I don't really have faith in you either, then. That's not the worst of it, Alan. Don't you see? You don't even have faith in yourself. But I do. Do you? Here were two times when you were faced with a good opportunity, and yet you couldn't make up your mind to do it. It's always been the same. That's the bad part, Alan. A man without faith. He's a man without faith in himself. Rebecca. Yes, Aaron. Do you hate me? No, Aaron. But I do pity you. And I want to help you. If you want help. I don't know. I have no faith. And I don't even know where to start to have it. I'm lost. Lost. Michael? Aaron? Aaron, did you hear anything? What? Uh, did I he hear... He called out. We must go to him. Michael! Michael! Son, son, do you hear me? He doesn't hear me, Rebecca. Again. It's happened again, Eric. Yes, dear. We mustn't lose our heads. We must do what we can. Do? What can we do? Wait. Just wait. I guess that's all. Poor boy. Poor, poor boy. To be so stricken. <laughs> thing will pass. It has to pass. The way he struggled. It was never quite so bad as this before. If only we could talk to him, give him courage, let him know that we're standing here beside him in this moment. We can say nothing. Do nothing. Just wait and watch. And pray. I wish you would, Rebecca. And you? I'm lost for time like this. It's the price of not believing. You pray, my dear. For both of us.
Rebecca. Morning. I wondered if it would ever come. I must go in and have a look. Oh, son. Son. I could never say this to you if you were listening. Never. Maybe you wonder. Maybe it goes through your young mind sometimes. And I can't tell. You'd have a right to ask. You'd have a right to say, Father, can't you do something for me? Can no one lift this curse from me? Yes, you could ask that. And what could I say? Only that I've done all I can. But there doesn't seem to be anything that can help. Alan. Uh, Alan, I... You heard. Yes. I'm sorry. Haven't I thought the same many times? I guess there are some things a man should never say. He should never say he's done all he can. Haven't I? No, dear. So many physicians, they've all said the same, done the same. Say they're sorry, shake their heads. I wasn't suggesting that you take him to another physician. Oh. I know what you mean now. Yes. The master. You want me to take him? A man who doesn't believe? You could, if you wanted No. You don't really understand what goes on inside me. Are there times... Mother? Michael. Michael. You're here. And you too, Father. Yes, Michael. We're here. Only waiting for you to wake up, son. See? Look out there. It's morning. You've just awakened. It was a bad night, Father. You must have dreamed it. It came so suddenly. I... I was frightened. I wanted you and Mother, but you weren't here. We were here, son. We'll always be here. And now your mother and I must get you something to eat. You must be hungry. Yes, dear. We'll bring you something. Ah. He's better. Only for the moment. You know how it's been before. Yes, I know. Then won't you do what I ask? I wanted to. But there's nothing within me that responds. All things I know, I, I must know through seeing, feeling, experiencing. Only after that can I believe. I'm only asking for our son's sake. You could take him. No, Anne. You're the one who must do it. Try. Try. <laughs> That, that look in his eyes. I'm afraid it's coming on again. I know. So we must wait the next weeks in dread that will happen once more. And because you have no faith, we do nothing, not even for our own son. Perhaps Rob our son, too. Oh, I've thought about it. But there's still something missing in me. Perhaps if we started out, the three of us, on the road it might come to you. The ability to believe. We could find him. We could talk to him before this dread thing struck Michael again. Do you think so? We could at least try for our own son. Oh, Aaron. Aaron, give him this chance before it's too late. The next time he may die. Please, Rebecca. Don't cry. This time, I'll do as you say. For the boy's sake, we'll go. We've never 
been this far from home before. No, Michael. And do you feel well, son? A little tired, but I can go on. We are going on, aren't we? Another day, possibly two. Then we shall be there. Capernaum. Mother. Michael. Michael, what is it? I, I don't know. It seemed like, like the blackness was coming again. Mother, and... I have him in my arms. There. We must set him down to rest a while. It's growing dark. Will we stay here by the roadside forever? He's more ill now than he's ever been. This time is the worst of all. What can we do for him here? The water's already gone. With nothing to wet his lips with but tears. I know. Rebecca. Yes, sir. You have such faith. You're always believing. But if there is any power in this master you worship, then I shall find it out. What do you mean, Alan? I shall carry the boy in my arms the rest of the way. All the way to Capernaum. Can you do it? I can do anything. If it's for my son. It means traveling all night. I can do it. Aaron. Aaron, you should rest a while. Capernaum. That's the place I'll rest. But you've been walking all night. And I shall keep on. How is he now? The same. His body still struggles. At times I think he's ready to cry out. But he never does. Does he burn? Where his head rests against my chest. He was very warm. Then we should stop to bathe his head. With what? No. We'll keep going. Till we see the city wall of Capernaum. Come. Hurry. Well, Rebecca, is this the place? Yes, Harriet. All these people have come here to see him. And point out the master to me. I shall lay my son at his feet. Let me look. Hurry, Rebecca. My, our son dies. I can feel it. There. Do you see him? The one who stands surrounded by all the others? Yes, Helen. Then I shall go to him. But you must speak for me, Rebecca. I? No, Helen. It must be you. What shall I say to him? Master, I don't believe in you. And because I don't believe, I want you to hear my son who dies. No. You speak for me, Rebecca. Alan, you've always said you wanted to believe and weren't able. Well, this is your chance. Tell him honestly and humbly what's in your heart. And then see if he'll help you to believe. Our son's life hangs on it. If I didn't have faith, I wouldn't be here. Go, oh, Aaron. You ask him. Then be with me, Rebecca. Beside me. Master. Master, I have brought you my son who is stricken by a strange evil. I lay him here before you. Look for yourself at his tortured body, at the way he struggles. Help him, please, Master. Cure him that he shall be free forever of this cursed illness. (laughs) 
How long is it ago since this came unto him? Since he was a little child, Master. But now, this moment, he seems closer to death than ever before. Master, if you can do anything, have compassion on us. Help us. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Believe? This moment more than any other, would I want to believe? Yes. I want to believe. Help me, Lord, in my unbelief. Thou spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. Master, his body moves suddenly and violently. Now he's calm, as though he's dead. Oh, Master. Master, why do you reach down to take his hand? And you lift him up. Master. Master. I could. I could, my son. Yes, Father. Why do you say it that way? Rebecca. Look. Our son. Well. Alive. Master. Master. Now I can believe. I see. And what I see is changed by unbelief to great faith. I have faith in you, in my fellow men. In my wife. Even in myself. My whole life has changed, Lord. I am no longer alone. Listening to The Unbelieving, another episode in the greatest story ever told from the greatest life ever lived. ever told was a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.